Welcome to the School of Engineering at Tomasic Polytechnic, the nexus of technological innovation where the future happens. Receive broad-based training in core engineering areas while you specialize in exciting fields such as advanced manufacturing, aerospace, aviation, sustainable energy, integrated facility management or biomedical engineering and get the versatility that will give you an edge in today's digital economy. From classrooms to labs, research centers to maker spaces, from conducive study areas to cozy enclaves for your social activities, we are dedicated to providing you with an exciting, rewarding and experiential learning experience during your three years here with us. Our curriculum places strong emphasis on practical training with workplace applications, with a robust technology innovation culture, prominent industry partners, a multidisciplinary curriculum coupled with highly effective teaching methods. An engineering diploma from our school ensures that you will have a bright future. Cultivating a global mindset is also a key ingredient in a wholesome education. And while there are TP engineers working all around the world, they all started here. See the world the way you built it. Your journey starts here with the School of Engineering at TP. Welcome to the Clean Energy Research Centre. Our Clean Energy Research Centre focuses on smart energy technologies, energy generation and intelligent power systems. One of our smart energy products is the Smart Distribution Board that uses energy analytics to understand people's usage and behaviour. Our students are attached to the centre to gain exposure to industry-relevant R&D, as well as to design and build innovative applications such as our fuel cell-powered eco-car. Incidentally, this eco-car designed in our centre has taken the top spot in the regional Shell Eco Marathon race for three years running. Here, we also build and design drones to serve the industries for applications such as building and infrastructure inspections. How cool is that? We hope to see you soon! The Healthcare Engineering Centre brings together both scientists and engineers to advance the development of healthcare devices and systems based on biomedical microelectromechanical systems or BioMs for short. The centre also works with various industry and academia partners to develop and deploy innovative devices for the medical and healthcare sectors. Aviation Research Centre focuses on research and innovation to help develop cutting-edge aerospace capabilities that are future-oriented. Complete with fully equipped labs and a Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore SAR 147 certified hangar, the centre also works closely with various industry partners on spearheading exploration into the possible evolution of unmanned aerial systems, instrumentation and maintenance. Tomasic Polytechnic's Digital Fabrication and Additive Manufacturing Centre, housing some of the industry's finest equipment, works closely with various industry partners in knowledge sharing and project collaboration. Here, you can work on design innovation and application projects that are relevant to the industry's needs, while getting an authentic hands-on experience with cutting-edge 3D printing technology. Our Enabling Technology Collaboratory 
conducts multiple cross-disciplinary research and development related to core enabling technologies to contribute to Singapore's Smart Nation initiative. Here, students can learn about core technologies such as virtual reality learning, 3D immersive media, artificial intelligence and Internet of Things, and how these are applied in innovative ways to support teaching and learning, as well as to enhance our daily lives. The TPLTT Centre was jointly set up by Tomasek Polytechnic and Lufthansa Technical Training of Germany in 2007 to provide specialised practical training for our aerospace students. Meeting the new SAR-66 standards set by the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore, TP is the only local polytechnic to be certified as an approved aircraft maintenance training organisation for all its aerospace courses. This gives our aerospace students better industry recognition, making TP the undisputed go-to polytechnic for aerospace training in Singapore and the region. The Tomasek Polytechnic Advanced Manufacturing Centre concentrates on the need to upskill both the existing and future workforce as advanced manufacturing technologies such as robotics and automation, artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things become more prevalent today. Students attached to the centre get to do hands-on research and development on these emerging technologies so that they are ready to ride the wave of the new Industry 4.0 transformation. The Tomasek Polytechnic and HIT Robot Group Robotics Innovation Center, jointly set up by TP and the HIT Robot Group of China, serves as a testbed and knowledge-sharing platform for the development, customization and incubating of advanced robotics applications. It aims to accelerate the adoption of automation and smart manufacturing solutions in line with the emerging needs of Industry 4.0. Polytechnic's Robotics and Automation Centre focuses on research and development for advanced manufacturing and workplace automation where humans, machines and systems communicate and collaborate safely in real time. To date, the centre has produced multiple award-winning projects along with patented automation designs to meet the emerging needs of Industry 4.0. Welcome to the School of Engineering at Tomasek Polytechnic, the nexus of technological innovation where the future happens. Receive broad-based training in core engineering areas while you specialize in exciting fields such as advanced manufacturing, aerospace, aviation, sustainable energy, integrated facility management or biomedical engineering and get the versatility that will give you an edge in today's digital economy. From classrooms to labs, research centres to maker spaces, from conducive study areas to cosy enclaves for your social activities, we are dedicated to providing you with an exciting, rewarding and experiential learning experience during your three years here with us. Our curriculum places a strong emphasis on practical training with workplace applications, with a robust technology innovation culture, prominent industry partners, a multidisciplinary curriculum coupled with highly effective teaching methods. An engineering diploma from our school ensures that you will have a bright future. Cultivating the global mindset is also a key ingredient in a wholesome education. And while there are TP engineers working all around the world, they all started here. 
see the world the way you built it. Your journey starts here with the School of Engineering at JP. Welcome to the Clean Energy Research Centre. Our Clean Energy Research Centre focuses on smart energy technologies, energy generation and intelligent power systems. One of our smart energy products is the Smart Distribution Board that uses energy analytics to understand people's usage and behaviour. Our students are attached to the centre to gain exposure to industry-relevant R&D, as well as to design and build innovative applications such as our fuel cell-powered eco-car. Incidentally, this eco-car designed in our centre has taken the top spot in the regional Shell Eco Marathon race for three years running. Here, we also build and design drones to serve the industries for applications such as building and infrastructure inspections. How cool is that? We hope to see you soon. The Healthcare Engineering Centre brings together both scientists and engineers to advance the development of healthcare devices and systems based on Biomedical Microelectromechanical Systems or BioMs for short. The centre also works with various industry and academia partners to develop and deploy innovative devices for the medical and healthcare sectors. Aviation Research Centre focuses on research and innovation to help develop cutting-edge aerospace capabilities that are future-oriented. Complete with fully equipped labs and a Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore SAR 147 certified hangar, the centre also works closely with various industry partners on spearheading exploration into the possible evolution of unmanned aerial systems, instrumentation and maintenance. Tomasic Polytechnic's Digital Fabrication and Additive Manufacturing Centre, housing some of the industry's finest equipment, works closely with various industry partners in knowledge sharing and project collaboration. Here, you can work on design innovation and application projects that are relevant to the industry's needs, while getting an authentic hands-on experience with cutting-edge 3D printing technology. Our Enabling Technology Collaboratory conducts multiple cross-disciplinary research and development related to core enabling technologies to contribute to Singapore's Smart Nation initiative. Here, students can learn about core technologies such as virtual reality learning, 3D immersive media, artificial intelligence and Internet of Things, and how these are applied in innovative ways to support teaching and learning, as well as to enhance our daily lives. The TPLTT Centre was jointly set up by Tomasic Polytechnic and Lufthansa Technical Training of Germany in 2007 to provide specialised practical training for our aerospace students. Meeting the new SAR-66 standards set by the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore, TP is the only local polytechnic to be certified as an approved aircraft maintenance training organisation for all its aerospace courses. This gives our aerospace students better industry recognition, making TP the undisputed go-to polytechnic for aerospace training in Singapore and the region.
The Tomasic Polytechnic Advanced Manufacturing Center concentrates on the need to upskill both the existing and future workforce as advanced manufacturing technologies such as robotics and automation, artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things become more prevalent today. Students attached to the center get to do hands-on research and development on these emerging technologies so that they are ready to ride the wave of the new Industry 4.0 transformation. The Tomasic Polytechnic and HIT Robot Group Robotics Innovation Center, jointly set up by TP and the HIT Robot Group of China, serves as a testbed and knowledge-sharing platform for the development, customization and incubating of advanced robotics applications. It aims to accelerate the adoption of automation and smart manufacturing solutions in line with the emerging needs of Industry 4.0. Polytechnic's Robotics and Automation Center focuses on research and development for advanced manufacturing and workplace automation where humans, machines and systems communicate and collaborate safely in real time. To date, the center has produced multiple award-winning projects along with patented automation designs to meet the emerging needs of Industry 4.0. Welcome to the School of Engineering at Tomasic Polytechnic, the nexus of technological innovation where the future happens. Receive broad-based training in core engineering areas while you specialize in exciting fields such as advanced manufacturing, aerospace, aviation, sustainable energy, integrated facility management or biomedical engineering and get the versatility that will give you an edge in today's digital economy. From classrooms to labs, research centers to maker spaces, from conducive study areas to cozy enclaves for your social activities, we are dedicated to providing you with an exciting, rewarding and experiential learning experience during your three years here with us. Our curriculum places strong emphasis on practical training with workplace applications, with a robust technology innovation culture prominent industry partners, a multidisciplinary curriculum coupled with highly effective teaching methods. An engineering diploma from our school ensures that you will have a bright future. Cultivating a global mindset is also a key ingredient in a wholesome education. And while there are TP engineers working all around the world, they all started here. See the world the way you built it. Your journey starts here with the School of Engineering at TP. Welcome to the Clean Energy Research Center. Our Clean Energy Research Center focuses on smart energy technologies, energy generation and intelligent power systems. One of our smart energy products is the Smart Distribution Board that uses energy analytics to understand people's usage and behavior. Our students are attached to the center to gain exposure to industry-relevant R&D, as well as to design and build innovative applications such as our fuel cell-powered eco-car. Incidentally, this eco-car designed in our center has taken the top spot in the regional Shell Eco Marathon race for three years running. Here, we also build and design drones to serve the industries for applications such as building and infrastructure inspections. How cool is that? We hope to see you soon! Our 
Healthcare Engineering Center brings together both scientists and engineers to advance the development of healthcare devices and systems based on biomedical microelectromechanical systems, or BioMs for short. The center also works with various industry and academia partners to develop and deploy innovative devices for the medical and healthcare sectors. Aviation Research Center focuses on research and innovation to help develop cutting-edge aerospace capabilities that are future-oriented. Complete with fully equipped labs and a Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore SAR 147 certified hangar, the center also works closely with various industry partners on spearheading exploration into the possible evolution of unmanned aerial systems, instrumentation and maintenance. Tomasic Polytechnic's Digital Fabrication and Additive Manufacturing Centre, housing some of the industry's finest equipment, works closely with various industry partners in knowledge sharing and project collaboration. Here, you can work on design innovation and application projects that are relevant to the industry's needs, while getting an authentic hands-on experience with cutting-edge 3D printing technology. Our Enabling Technology Collaboratory conducts multiple cross-disciplinary research and development related to core enabling technologies to contribute to Singapore's Smart Nation initiative. Here, students can learn about core technologies such as virtual reality learning, 3D immersive media, artificial intelligence and Internet of Things, and how these are applied in innovative ways to support teaching and learning, as well as to enhance our daily lives. The TPLTT Centre was jointly set up by Tomasic Polytechnic and Lufthansa Technical Training of Germany in 2007 to provide specialised practical training for our aerospace students. Meeting the new SAR-66 standards set by the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore, TP is the only local polytechnic to be certified as an approved aircraft maintenance training organisation for all its aerospace courses. This gives our aerospace students better industry recognition, making TP the undisputed go-to polytechnic for aerospace training in Singapore and the region. The Tomasic Polytechnic Advanced Manufacturing Centre concentrates on the need to upskill both the existing and future workforce as advanced manufacturing technologies such as robotics and automation, artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things become more prevalent today. Students attached to the centre get to do hands-on research and development on these emerging technologies so that they are ready to ride the wave of the new Industry 4.0 transformation. Welcome to the School of Engineering at Tomasic Polytechnic, the nexus of technological innovation where the future happens. Receive broad-based training in core engineering areas while you specialize in exciting fields such as advanced manufacturing, aerospace, aviation, sustainable energy, integrated facility management or biomedical engineering and get the versatility that will give you an edge in today's digital economy. 
from classrooms to labs, research centers to maker spaces, from conducive study areas to cozy enclaves for your social activities. We are dedicated to providing you with an exciting, rewarding, and experiential learning experience during your three years here with us. Our curriculum places strong emphasis on practical training with workplace applications, with a robust technology innovation culture, prominent industry partners, a multidisciplinary curriculum coupled with highly effective teaching methods. An engineering diploma from our school ensures that you will have a bright future. Cultivating a global mindset is also a key ingredient in a wholesome education. And while there are TP engineers working all around the world, they all started here. See the world the way you built it. Your journey starts here with the School of Engineering at TP. Welcome to the Clean Energy Research Centre. Our Clean Energy Research Centre focuses on smart energy technologies, energy generation and intelligent power systems. One of our smart energy products is the Smart Distribution Board that uses energy analytics to understand people's usage and behaviour. Our students are attached to the centre to gain exposure to industry-relevant R&D, as well as to design and build innovative applications such as our fuel cell-powered eco-car. Incidentally, this eco-car designed in our centre has taken the top spot in the regional Shell Eco Marathon race for three years running. Here, we also build and design drones to serve the industries for applications such as building and infrastructure inspections. How cool is that? We hope to see you soon! Our Healthcare Engineering Centre brings together both scientists and engineers to advance the development of healthcare devices and systems based on Biomedical Microelectromechanical Systems, or BioMs for short. The centre also works with various industry and academia partners to develop and deploy innovative devices for the medical and healthcare sectors. Aviation Research Centre focuses on research and innovation to help develop cutting-edge aerospace capabilities that are future-oriented. Complete with fully equipped labs and a Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore SAR 147 certified hangar, the centre also works closely with various industry partners on spearheading exploration into the possible evolution of unmanned aerial systems, instrumentation and maintenance. Tomasic Polytechnic's Digital Fabrication and Additive Manufacturing Centre, housing some of the industry's finest equipment, works closely with various industry partners in knowledge sharing and project collaboration. Here, you can work on design innovation and application projects that are relevant to the industry's needs, while getting an authentic hands-on experience with cutting-edge 3D printing technology. Our Enabling Technology Collaboratory conducts multiple cross-disciplinary research and development related to core enabling technologies to contribute to Singapore's Smart Nation initiative. Here, students can learn about core technologies such as virtual reality learning, 3D immersive media, artificial intelligence and Internet of Things, and how these are applied in innovative ways to support teaching and learning, as well as to enhance our daily lives. Right. 
A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the TP Engineering Tech Show 2021. My name is Sarah. And I'm Christopher, and it is our pleasure to be your MCs for today's program. For more than 20 years, the School of Engineering has hosted industry guests, parents, students, and members of the public on campus at their annual engineering project show. This year, to reach out to all of you, we took up the challenge of hosting an online tech show. The theme for this year's show is where technology meets innovation, and we hope you enjoy the new online format. Mr. Wong Kiani, Director of the School of Engineering, Tamasic Polytechnic, members of the School Advisory Committee, our industry guest, Mr. Lim Chi Kun, Design Consultant, Grab Wheels Private Limited, industry partners, distinguished guests, parents and students, ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted to have you with us here today. And to share with you some examples of the exciting, innovative and relevant work being done by the students of the School of Engineering in response to the real needs of our extended community. Without further ado, we are pleased to introduce the Director of the School of Engineering, Mr. Wong Kiani, to give some opening remarks. Mr. Wong, please. Good morning. And thank you for taking time to join us at our Engineering Tech Show 2021. Also joining us today are our partners from the industry, as well as our colleagues from the secondary schools, ITEs and other polytechnics. I would like to thank all of you for supporting us in educating and preparing our students to contribute well to the society, leveraging on technology and innovations and with strong commitment to improving the lives around us. The theme of this tech show is where technology meets innovation. In this show, we would like to share some of our students' creativity and innovations to use technology to develop solutions to improve our life and the community around us. One of the projects shared today is on how our students have devised a smart way to disinfect leaves as part of the pandemic management. Another project is a collaboration with the Singapore General Hospital to develop a robotic prosthetic hand to aid in better hand movement. We will be sharing more of this innovation across four thematic areas, namely aviation, digital sustainability, healthcare, and advanced manufacturing. These are also some of our key competencies. And if you would like to know more, I invite you to connect with us. Today, we are also fortunate to have with us Chi Kun, design consultant from GradWheels. GradWheels is also one of our project partners in green transportation development. I certainly look forward to hearing from Chi Kun on GrabU's experience in the last mile sustainability transportation. Thank you, Chi Kun. Thanks to everyone again for taking time to join us here and do enjoy the show where technology meets innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wong, for your opening address. I'm sure our audience is looking forward to seeing the students' work. To provide context for the projects, we invite you to watch the following video showing an overview of the facilities and areas of expertise within the School of Engineering. Welcome to the School of Engineering at Tomasic Polytechnic, the nexus of technological innovation where the future happens. Receive broad-based training in core engineering areas while you specialize in exciting fields such as advanced manufacturing, aerospace, aviation, sustainable energy, integrated facility management or biomedical engineering and get the versatility that will give you an edge in today's digital economy. From classrooms to labs, research centers to maker spaces, from conducive study areas to cozy enclaves for your social activities, we are dedicated to providing you with an exciting, rewarding, and experiential learning experience during your three years here with us. 
our curriculum places a strong emphasis on practical training with workplace applications, with a robust technology innovation culture, prominent industry partners, a multidisciplinary curriculum, coupled with highly effective teaching methods. An engineering diploma from our school ensures that you will have a bright future. Cultivating a global mindset is also a key ingredient in a wholesome education. And while there are TP engineers working all around the world, they all started here. See the world the way you built it. Your journey starts here with the School of Engineering at TP. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Lim Chi Kun, an industry speaker with the wealth of experience in innovation. Mr. Lim is the founder and innovation director of Anthrolab Private Limited and has recently been applying his expertise as a design consultant at Grab Wheels. This morning, Mr. Lim will share with us the challenges and fun Grab Wheels faced in addressing sustainability in last mile transportation. In a presentation he has entitled, Tinkering with the Green. Mr. Lim, please. Okay, good morning. Thank you for the invitations and very honored to share with everyone here about Grab Wheels. Okay, so today, what is Grab? Okay, Grab, in the world of Grabs, we have different functions, you know, different services that is around, you know, in this, in, in this grab of world. And very much we covered Southeast Asia. Uh, and in Operation Singapore, I believe everyone is familiar that we have grab cars, we have grab foods, and of course some finance services that we are providing today. So huge market opportunity here and in Grab Wheels particularly, we are addressing the last mile travel. So last, what do I mean by last mile travel? So last mile travel enables our users to travel short distance, uh, areas that is harder to assess. So in a sense, when we are lo looking at last mile travel, we used scooters as a medium, we used bicycle, Sometimes our user walk instead of using these tools. So today in the business of Grab Wheels, what are the challenge? Okay, the challenge today is not just uh, addressing sustainability and carbon footprint. So imagine the amount of fuels we can save or the, the carbon footprints that, that we can address to build a better environment. So we do have certain problems that we face when we are building the business. So first, we address the unsustainable current car-centric transport model. So imagine everyone sits in a car uh, with only one passenger, you know, we will be having a lot of carbon footprint. So apart from addressing that, we also need to address convenient, comfortable and affordable riding experience for our user. So this is very important in the sense where we need to, you know, besides, besides uh, comfort, convenience, uh, it has to be affordable. And if this is not addressed, you know, our user will most likely go back to the car. So importantly as well, safety and behavior of our user. So we are talking about user using only the transportation that they are controlling. So in this sense, it has to be safe. And we also need to know how they behave in order to adopt this vehicle. The next challenge is actually the operations. So by having vehicles that is accessible to all people, we need to be able to be able to maintain okay, this vehicle well, uh, so they are in tip-top conditions, they are safe to use, and they are always available. Uh, 
Um, last but not least, I think one of the challenges that we have you know, in grab wheels is that we have to be very sensitive to the policy and regulations in the different parts of the country. So we used to run scooter sharing in Singapore. Uh, so this is actually a very good learning experience for us because what we have learned is that apart from safety, okay, uh, the behavior of our users are important because that will determine how safe this vehicle, this last mile vehicle is for our, our environment. With these challenges, you know, lies the, of course, there lies the opportunities. So in every part aspect of the opportunities, we are talking about uh, opportunities to, to have the fun, you know, to be able to build up these infrastructures, uh, opportunity to go into electrical vehicles. So that helps a lot in terms of sustainability. And we also look into the opportunity of technology advancement. So we are looking into things like how to track the scooter, uh, how to how to collect data, you know, so that we can inform the design, you know, to build better features within the innovations. So, technology advancement uh, here in this case is also a huge opportunity, you know, for the team to look into. So, in our few years of operations, we have tried a lot of different design. So one of these design that we are proud of uh, that I would like to share today is the e-scooter you know, that is built for sharing. So when we look at the, the design of the scooter, it looks like any other scooter. But very much when we built this scooter, we, we actually have to go through the redefinitions of how we want to build the battery, how we want to give a better user experience, and how modular can it be designed? How modular, how in the, to the extent where can it be simplified in terms of the number of parts within the scooter? Can it be easily replaced you know, in case there's any defects on the scooter? And last but not least, the design you know, is, is meant for sharing. So in every aspect, we need to design such that it can withstand vandalism, for example. It can withstand the, the weather. Okay, so these are all features that is new when you compare it to the conventional consumer scooter. So this is an example of how we can simplify the scooter in terms of parts. So we try to increase the strength, the robustness, yet we, at the same time, we, try to, we also try to simplify it. So in a sense, if we are able to modularize them, you know, this is actually one way to increase the efficiency in our operations as well. So apart from the vehicle, okay, apart from the vehicle, we also explore the different technologies. So as such, uh, very honored to mention that we are working with the CERC, okay, the, the Clean Energy Center to Intermassipoli to develop a fast charging hydrogen fuel cell charger for our scooter. So, we have in mind that you know, uh, this is built in relation to exploring the new technologies in charging batteries, uh, as well as uh, we also look into the design on how we, want to design, uh, how we want this charger to look like. So the portable uh, hydrogen fuel cell fast charger is developed and with in mind that you know this is this is for us to experiment with the technologies and and being portable 
means that we can actually deploy these charging stations at any point within dim fit. And very much uh, a very interesting outcome we have that uh, besides working on the details of these technologies, uh, we think that this is something that is new where we tinker with in this sense. So very much we like to further develop this product and we even tried it on the bicycle. So, so today we have uh, different options and this lies a huge opportunities as well for us you know, to look into how this can be developed into something that is more usable uh, in our environment. So besides tinkering with technologies, uh, there are other areas in design that we work on. So for example, we are always looking at how user react to the use of the scooter. Uh, so very much the first experience of our novice user is that they don't know how to start the scooter. So we can go from simple tinkering, like putting on instructions, design on the scooter itself, okay, to other tinkering exercises, like for example, planting a NFC reader on the scooter. So the NFC reader enables user to quickly assess the scooter. So once you tap the NFC on the reader, you can unlock the scooter where you recognize all your information and even uh, charge you through this NFC reader. So we also look into how we park the scooter, okay, how organized it should be, what kind of technology can we use, you know, how can we detect how well the scooter is being parked. Is it falling down, is it upright, is it parked at the right positions? So this involves technology as well as we are tinkering. We also look into the different types of user. So besides last mile, uh, we also explore food delivery. So in fact, you know, we tinker with this idea, we use this hardware, we open this hardware to our food delivery riders. And very much again, this opens up another opportunity for the business. So a lot of tinkering going on. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but the main idea of in tinkering is that we continue to work with ideas. We build the ideas and very much we try the ideas. So there are times when we fail. Um, this instance when we launch our scooter, we used it in Singapore, and because of the regulations, we are limited by the usage the area that we can cover. And this, uh, this, this allow us to start thinking about, rethinking about how, what we want to do with our business. So in this case, we stop the operation here in Singapore but that doesn't mean we stop our, our, our uh, design thinking, we stop tinkering and continue explorations of ideas. Um, so very much one day, we think that we will come up with something and we will make a comeback to Singapore. So this is one failure, but that doesn't mean we stop doing it. So very much uh, we continue with our explorations, uh, the uh, main thing, you know, as an engineer, as a designer, is that we shouldn't be, uh, st we shouldn't stop, you know, in, in trying out new things that could potentially lead to innovations. Only when, only when uh, uh, this product is successfully launched and run in the industry, in the, in the, in the environment, uh, we uh, run the environment. We will, we will, we will then see that you know we will jump and move on to another, 
innovations adventure. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to share. I hope that everyone uh, who has the passion of engineering uh, continue to tinker, continue to work on your ideas. And I believe one day this idea will uh, flourish and, and, and go into adoptions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lim, for your very interesting presentation. I'm sure we are all looking forward to even more innovations from Grab in the future. Mm -hmm. But right now, it is time to talk about the projects from our own students. Despite the lack of in-person events in 2020, our engineering students performed extremely well in a range of engineering competitions, winning several awards, including the Gold Award for Fine Motor Skills Training for Autistic Children, the Smart Glove Project and prizes in several other national and international level competitions. We will be showcasing some of these award-winning projects at today's events as well as some of our outstanding major projects. Let's take a look at some of our award winners. That's been a pretty impressive performance from some of our students this past year. That's right, but that was only a taste of the variety of projects that we will be able to showcase this morning. To begin the aviation segment of the program, we will take a closer look at one of the 11 centres of excellence here at the School of Engineering, the Aviation Research Centre. Our Aviation Research Centre focuses on research and innovation to help develop cutting-edge aerospace capabilities that are future-oriented. Complete with fully equipped labs and a Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore SAR 147 certified hangar, the centre also works closely with various industry partners on spearheading exploration into the possible evolution of unmanned aerial systems, instrumentation and maintenance. you guys have some really cool facilities. I had no idea that aerospace students did all that. Yep, in the aerospace-related diplomas, we cover all aspects of aviation, from engineering and electronics, all the way to the business side of things. There are some fantastic projects from the aerospace-related diplomas, and the students are doing some really interesting work. Yep, including our first project group, who have solved the problem of easily crashed drones, by equipping their drone with an obstacle avoidance sensor. Sounds interesting. Let's take a look at what they have been working on. Great, this technology will make it so much easier to fly a drone safely. Let's begin the digital sustainability segment with a look at the Clean Energy Research Centre. Welcome to the Clean Energy Research Centre. Our Clean Energy Research Centre focuses on smart energy technologies 
energy generation and intelligent power systems. One of our smart energy products is the Smart Distribution Board that uses energy analytics to understand people's usage and behavior. Our students are attached to the center to gain exposure to industry-relevant R&D, as well as to design and build innovative applications such as our fuel cell-powered eco-car. Incidentally, this eco-car designed in our center has taken the top spot in the regional Shell Eco Marathon race for three years running. Here, we also build and design drones to serve the industries for applications such as building and infrastructure inspections. How cool is that? We hope to see you soon. Solving real-world problems is a major goal of the diplomas which come under the Integrative Built Environment Center. It's a broad field, but the focus is on using technology to create more sustainable spaces and also to envision spaces for the new normal post-pandemic environment. We have some students standing by to present two innovative projects, and if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. Now let's switch over to them to find out what they have been working on. Hi everyone, I'm Jacobs. We are from the Diploma of Green Building and Sustainability, and this is Aaron. Joining us today, we have... Hi, I'm Hyrule, and this is Syed. We are from the Diploma of Integrated Facility Management. So where's Wanyu and Johan? Are they joining us? Hey, why were the both of you late? Have you seen the canteen? It's so packed. There's no seats left. There are also a lot of safe distancing ambassador work watching too. Sorry, I was late and had to climb the stairs. The cleaners were disinfecting the lifts. Disinfecting? Why is it important to disinfect the lifts? Due to COVID-19, the lifts are actually one of the most confined spaces. Thus, it's important to thoroughly disinfect the interior of the lift to prevent the spread of the virus. Yeah, didn't you notice there's more safe distancing measures taken place in school? Well, that's true. The usual, the usual routine that we typically have has been changed completely. Once lesson has been resumed in school, there are many measures implemented to ensure everyone's safety. I know, right? I've also noticed that our day cleaners in school have stepped up their disinfection routine to ensure safety. It must have been very tough for them. Actually, like Johan mentioned earlier, we have also noticed that our current canteen, Short Circuit, has always had the issue of overcrowding. Now, with safe distancing measures, even fewer students can enter and enjoy their meals. Because of this, we decided to redesign the canteen as our initiative to improve the facility management in the school. Let me show you guys. This allowed the new canteen to be more spacious for students to have a pleasant dining experience while having safe distancing. Wow, the design, the design looks amazing. Can you guys tell us more about the redesigned short circuit? To understand the needs of the student, we first conducted a survey focusing on the preference of the student. From that, we learned that there was a popular opinion that the canteen should be more spacious due to limited walking space and capacity. Furthermore, students desire a wider array of food choices in their canteen. Additionally, we conducted some research on queue design and bird nuisance to increase the comfort of the patrons in the canteen. We were able to incorporate the research we have done into our project by selecting some practical queue design arrangement and technologies such as bird laser deterrent to combat bird nuisance and as well as CCTVs for surveillance. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have decided to design a refurbished two-story model of the existing canteen. In addition, we have been able to implement our research as well as skills acquired from Polytechnic to create this new model. We have used digital architectural tools such as Building Information Modeling or BIM to fabricate our final design of the canteen. By using Enscape and architecture design software, we have produced a walkthrough video of the effortless visualization for the proposed model. Queue designs of the canteen will allow more capacities of the queue of patrons. We have successfully increased the queuing capacity from 36 all the way to 92, helping to solve the needs of overcrowding. 
We use array tools to include food store signages in 3D models. A teacher's dining area was added to cater to polytechnic staff to increase the quality of their dining experience. We have also included a void within the canteen to assist in traffic flow as it allows for two walkway to enter and exit. Student presentation area were added to allow students to practice during their lunch break. Components such as projectors and couches to maximize the student's comfort. An outdoor balcony provides an aesthetically pleasing multi-purpose area for the students to unwind during breaks or after school. Outdoor lights are installed to allow outdoor activity to resume at night. To fully utilize the space of the area, we have redesigned it that is now a two-story establishment. To encourage natural light and ventilation, we have included many openings on the exterior of the model. The addition of greenery in the canteen has also increased the indoor air quality as plants constantly release oxygen through photosynthesis. Wow, looks like you guys have thought through this design really well. What about you guys? Are there any objectives that you guys have come up with to improve the current condition in school? Yeah, let me introduce to you the smart lift technology that we have came up with. Due to COVID-19, we as young leaders wanted to, <coughs> wanted to fight against COVID-19 and help Singapore become a smart and safe city. Thus, we took up the initiative to design and manufacture a smart lift prototype that is used to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Firstly, we would like to thank the National Research Foundation for giving us the grant to make a physical prototype of this smart lift. The design and concept of this lift uses smart technology and smart controllers to disinfect the interior of the lift within one minute of its activation. The UVC lights used and the UVC lights and sensors installed are also lightweight and connected in a single wire connection which will allow for easy assembly to other, other such lifts. Compared to the current disinfecting methods of uh, manual, disinfectant, manual disinfecting coats applied every, once every three months, our solution is more cost-effective, efficient, and smarter to enable a smart and safe living. Hmm, from what I heard, isn't UVC dangerous to human skin? Yes, definitely. That's why we have various sensors uh, to detect whether there is human in the leaf or not. So there are two sensors that act as a safety barrier for us human against the UVC light. So in this smart leaf, it consists of a human sensor and a door sensor. So these smart sensors are used to detect if the leaf is empty before the disinfecting routine will begin. So this reduces the need for cleaners as well as uh, reduce the potential for those cleaners that could be possible to be exposed to viruses as well as reduce in labor costs. So with all this data collected, we are able to prove that the UV light is uh, capable of mitigating COVID-19. As you can see from the legend, the color, which represents the UVC intensity at different points of the leaf surfaces, are enough to disinfect the COVID-19. So and finally, after testing, we have to assemble our smart system into our leaf to ensure that the leaf looks presentable and compact. So during this project, we have made many niche casing and cable management as we have very little sensors as, and they have different dimensions, so we had to make the casings accordingly. For us, the testing procedure was the most tedious task as we have to achieve sufficient UVC to mitigate the virus in the leaf. We also tested this UV technology in school, TP, to get more data and insight. There are a lot of researcher scientists involved in this, pro in this procedure to make this smart leaf possible. Huh, interesting. But how do you guys know if UVC light is actually able to disinfect COVID-19? 
Ah, prior to the data collected, we conduct various research and testing to find out the suitable UV side, UVC light they have to use, as well as how long we should turn it on for. We were given this UV intensity meter to be placed inside the leaf to record the UVC dosage for over 50 points within the leaf. Wow, it seems like you guys have really thought this through. Yes, however, the leaf idea and system is still at its preliminary stages. What we have done so far is to create a functioning prototype for this smart leaf. Since this project is still in its early stages, we hope to screw up the prototype to be implemented in multiple public spaces and in residential buildings in the various town councils. Some other future developments include uh, incorporating contactless leaf buttons, right, which will help prevent the spread of COVID-19. And we also want to link the system to the cloud to enable big data analytics to allow us to see if there are any estates with a high number of sickly people, which will allow for the smarter and more efficient uh, estate management. So with all this, we hope that the digital advancements in Singapore can help it tackle and fight against COVID-19. Yes, I agree that viruses such as COVID-19 can be easily spread in common areas, especially in lifts, like you said earlier. This technology seems crucial during this period. Wow, it seems like all of us have shown our passion in improving the lives of students in the school through the use of advanced engineering. Everyone agrees? Yes. Yep. Before we go, I would like to mention that we as GBS students were very fortunate to get the opportunity to work on a project that will make an impact in the built environment in Singapore. Yes, as a student of Integrated Facility Management, we are thankful to have this opportunity. We are able to apply our knowledge in digital architecture on a real project and able to make an impact on our own school. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Oh, cool idea. I've never thought of sanitizing an entire leaf before. Uh -huh. And I see that the two groups are ready to answer some questions from the online chat, so let's head back to them now. Mm. Thank you, MCs. Uh, looks like we have a question here, guys, for the short circuit project. So what are some of the modules we have learned that assist us with this project? So um, during our project, we actually use three subjects, digital architecture, sustainability, as well as uh, smart FM. Secondly, it will be um, fire safety and life management. And last but not least, will be security and surveillance. I hope that's answered your question. Uh, there's another question here from, sorry, for, any, for a short circuit as well. Uh, is there any calculation that I have done for the project? Mm, yeah, actually we did some calculations, especially for the CCTVs. Uh, we are actually able to um, calculate the field of view as well as the effective optical distance to see how far a camera can actually see. Mm, uh, I hope that's an that answers your question. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, next question here from Bevan. For the smart leaf project, how will the smart leaf self-disinfecting leaf affect the existing leaf when installed? So the system that is designed, uh, actually we designed it so that it doesn't interfere with the existing leaf. Mm -hmm. So that the, we also considered that it should not interfere with the existing trunking, existing wiring of the existing leaf. So it will just be a mount system onto the existing leaf. Lah. Uh, looks like we have the last question here uh, from Rachel J. For the smart leaf project, uh, how do you uh, is the UV light harmful when exposed to human? Uh, yes, as we mentioned earlier, uh, actually long exposure to uh, UVC uh, to our skins uh, actually quite can cause skin cancer. So uh, we actually have uh, various sensors to. Uh, prevent this from, from our UVC from actually disinfecting us human skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much to the two project teams. Before we end this segment, we have a very short video showcasing some of the other sustainability projects.
clearly there's a lot of diverse work being done in these fields, huh? Yes. I agree. Moving on to our healthcare segment, let's take a look at the Healthcare Engineering Centre video. Our Healthcare Engineering Centre brings together both scientists and engineers to advance the development of healthcare devices and systems based on biomedical microelectromechanical systems or BioMs for short. The centre also works with various industry and academia partners to develop and deploy innovative devices for the medical and healthcare sectors. The next presentations allow us to take a closer look at two innovative projects that focus on improving human health and well-being. Let's join the students as they showcase their healthcare presentations. All right, thank you to the MCs. Welcome everyone to the healthcare segment today. So we have Brandon, Sean, Nicholas, Aaron, and myself, Sakda, with you. So, hey guys, how have you all been? It's been so long since we last met. What have we all been up to, man? Yeah, man. Long time no see. Sorry, we've been quite busy for a major project, but we're happy to complete it, and we're looking forward to graduating soon. Oh, talking about major project, I'm actually really curious about what have you all actually been doing. Like, none of you have shared with us anything you've been doing. So, maybe you guys can share with us some of your, a bit about your project. So, we are doing a robotic prosthetic thumb for our major project. So overall, it has been going well and it has been a very fruitful journey. Ah, interesting. So what's, uh, who is this project created for and how does it help? That's a good question, Aaron. This project is catered for thumb amputees who have a problem carrying out daily tasks in their life. And this can also help thumb amputees to regain a larger degree of mobility and functional independence. So how about your major project? We are also curious on what you have all been working on? Oh, for our potential project, we have actually been working on this TCM Pulse Analyzer monitoring device that helps to monitor an elderly's health. So Aaron, how does the monitoring system help an elderly person? Ah, uh, yes, very good question. It helps by uh, helps them by identify possible early symptoms of illnesses. Ah, uh, I see. That's interesting. Well, we have also prepared. PowerPoint slides for our robotic prosthetic thumb, which I'll show you right now. So as you can see, uh, the thumb of the hand plays a crucial role in bending, scratching away or forwards our fingers. And therefore, without the thumb, tasks can be very difficult and complicated for thumb amputees to execute. Therefore, thumb amputees we, can, we provided an Arnold's thumb for them, which is a hand holder device containing the prosthetic thumb. And the prosthetic thumb is driven by a servo motor, which can be either digital or analog. And also, it is controlled by two types of input devices, which are micro switch and muscle sensor. And I'll pass the time to Sham, who will be presenting on the final product and the functionality. Thank you, Nicholas. So on this slide, you can see the final product of our Arnold's thumb. So from the images, you can see that our robotic prosthetic thumb is connected to a casing support. This casing support has been designed specifically to make it comfortable and fit securely onto the user's arm. This casing support also houses the components used, such as the Arduino and AA batteries, which are used to power and control the movement of our robotic prosthetic thumb. Overall, we are able to achieve a portable and comfortable casing support, which works hand-in-hand -hand with the robotic prosthetic thumb to achieve a good working product. In the next slide, we can see the Anos thumb in action. So the Anos thumb, as it can be seen, is carrying out a wide array of tasks. For example, holding a book, holding a wallet, and even taking out a note from a wallet. These activities are usually difficult and inconvenient for a thumb amputee, as the functionality of a thumb is quite important in carrying out these tasks. 
More than that, the thumb can also be used in carrying out craftsmanship tasks, such as filing, as you can see in the image provided. Also, another task it can be used is as simple as carrying a jar containing markers. And more than that, an important life skill that we usually use in our daily tasks and life is writing. And as you all can see from the slides, our prosthetic thumb is, helps to enable the user to carry out this task quite well. Now I'll be passing on the time to Brandon to explain our video. Thank you, Sean. So I'll be showing the video and explaining on how it works. So as you can see, there's a micro switch at the palm of my pinking finger that allows me to change the movement of the control of the thumb and to hold the bottle without dropping it. So as for the muscle sensor, you will notice there's a red sensor that is being attached at my arm. That is the new electrical sensor. And what it does is that it rests on top of the skin. And what it, what it works is that the sensor actually picks up the signal for, uh, from the movement of the, of the thumb itself. Movement of the arm itself and then convert it into an electrical signal and then controls the, thumb, the movement of the thumb. So that's all for our presentation. Now, Sadia, would you like to show your team works? Yeah, sure, no problem. Thanks to Brandon and team. So now, I'm pretty sure everyone here is equally curious about my project as well. So now, let me and my partner, Aaron, showcase to you our project, the TCM Pulse Analyzer. Without further ado, let us begin. So, firstly, have you ever visited a TCM clinic? you may have the impression that the TCM physician's diagnosis is very subjective. Our, our device may help, to, may give some help in solving this problem. Currently, there's no low-cost wearable TCM pulse, pulse monitoring device that can help to daily monitor our pulse signal on our own. According to the TCM theory, the TCM pulse signal can be collected at three different positions, namely Chun, Guan, and Chi as well as at three different depths called Fu, Zhong, and Chen. Our project aims to develop a low-cost and wearable pulse analyzer that allows for users to check for any signs of health problems. Currently, our project is focused on sensor fabrication, data collection circuit, and preliminary data analysis. The whole project is split into three main parts, namely signal collection via a microfluidic pressure sensor, sensor structure that senses pulse signal at different depths, as well as a signal processing circuit paired with signal analyzing ability. On the left are some images of the sensor designs that we have come up with during this whole, uh, whole project duration. Generally, the working principle of the sensor is that when pressure is applied on the sensor, the liquid gallium matter inside the microfluidic channel is compressed and deformed, causing electrical resistivity to increase or decrease depending on the pressure applied. This helps to form the graph that is displayed on the display unit. For the fabrication of the sensor, we first prepare a small amount of Ecoflex solution before pouring it onto the SU8 mode. Once the mixture is stabilized, we then degas it inside a vacuum oven before baking it at 80 degrees Celsius for an hour. Once baking is completed, the Ecoflex is then demolded before we carry out surface plasma treatment that facilitates the bonding of the Ecoflex to the PET film with metal electrodes. Then, liquid gallium metal is injected into the channel and once the channel is fully filled, the injection hole is sealed by the remaining Ecoflex solution. So, once the sensor is completely fabricated, it is then housed inside the plastic casing as shown on the image on the left, which has uh, signal wires connected to the metal electrodes and the snap wires that serve as a connection to the main circuit that's incorporated into a pillow for user comfort. And now, I shall pass over my, the time to Aaron, who shall continue talking about the programming aspect and application of the project. Aaron, please. Thank you, Ching Hong. As you can see on the screen, um, 
This is our block diagram of our pulse reader. On the right, it shows the hardware design, including the reading of the patient's blood pressure, and below that shows the pillow containing the main circuit. And this is our uh, program flow chart implemented in the main processing unit. In simple terms, the data from the sensor is captured and the waveform of the signal is displayed on the screen. Through Bluetooth connection to a mobile device, the processed signal can be transmitted to a storage device, allowing for data analysis for future when AI module is added to the system. And to test our prototype design, we first um, used the signal processing circuit was connected to a laptop, adjusting the wrist straps tightness, we were able to capture the pulse signal at different depths. The picture on the right shows the data captured and it shows three different depths. So having said that, what is the future of this project development? It mainly involves the addition of artificial intelligence or AI into our system, which involves the collaboration with ASTA and National Heart Center. In a nutshell, our team has developed a wearable TCM power reader based on microfluidic pressure sensor that senses and collects wrist artillery power signal for the future extraction. The system has been tested to be relatively high sensitivity, excellent reliability, and stability, allowing for practical application in TCM power signal collection. Next, we'll be showing you our video that we have done up. As you can see, these are four different modules, and this is how we fabricate the mold. And this is the degassing, and this is how we made it. Uh, this is showing us the different uh, prototype uh, pulse that is working. This is our mobile device. Uh, that's all for our video. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. Next, we'll move on to the Q&A session. Cool. I can see how these two projects would be really helpful. Definitely. Of course, these are just prototypes, but we can expect to see these type of things becoming more common in the future. I agree. And now that the groups have had a chance to catch their breath, let's go back to see them answer some questions from the audience. So he started when the student Anu Shang, who went for his student internship program at the Singapore General Hospital. So he was, uh, so he was start to develop the robotic prosthetic thumb uh, for the thumb and gravity patients. So, but three quarter of his uh, SIT, he met he met a tragic at his, uh, accident. So in memory of him, the project is being called as Arnold's Pros uh, prosthetic thumb. So you may be wondering uh, how heavy the hand can carry. Well, it can carry uh, the weight of a mineral water bottle, which is about 600 milliliter to 700 milliliter. So also the design can also can cater for both left and right thumb amputee. So I hope that this will help you answer your question. Okay, we'll just hold on, on, hold on for a while for the next question. Okay, for the TMC Pulse Analyzer project, what challenges did the student meet in the development process? Uh, for this, uh, we actually have uh, a few main challenges. One is um, the bonding of the Ecoflex, where the Ecoflex cannot bond to the PET film, where it's uh, plastic and the Ecoflex is rubber. Uh, the other one is uh, having to transfer the mechanical uh, design into, uh, into the the design to, to the sensor, where it's not efficiently uh, made out. And the other few points is, uh, it's very difficult to uh, detect the pulsation of each different individual. So uh, in future, we wanted to uh, automate that. Yeah, that's the few of the challenges. Hope I answer your question. Okay. So another question from Don Tan is, for the TAM project, what have you learned in your diploma program that you have applied 
in this project. Well, I'll first talk about the hard skills that we'll learn from the project. So firstly, is the knowledge of using computer-aided design tools like Creo 5, 6, where we have done the 3D modeling and designing. Uh, secondly, is the, this, the uh, secondly, is we have done circuit wiring on the Arduino Uno microcontroller board, where we have learned to use and code using the Arduino programming language. And this is used to send a set of signals to the microcontroller, where it controls the anostat. For the next question from Song Hong Tu, for the TMC sensor project, uh, what is your plan for the future work? Okay, uh, for the TCM project, uh, our future work mainly involves the uh, addition of this uh, AI model into our current device, and as well as collaboration with the Singapore General Hospital and the National Heart Centre. So currently, our device runs based on intelligent rule-based algorithm, which sticks out uh, around 17 parameters from the pulse waveform that we can currently get through the pressure sensor. And in the future, once we add in this uh, AI model, uh, the difference between these two different models is that the future, the future device will actually carry out analysis based on the, uh, the pre-trained AI model of which is already like preset uh, certain conditions that uh, the, the patient already have. So in a way, the future, the future uh, device will be more accurate and provide a more concrete analysis to the patients. But that, uh, that saying, uh, the, this analysis should only be used as a reference and should not be used for uh, uh, accurate medical diagnosis. And I hope that answers your question. Yes. Uh, then another question is, what is the estimated cost of the TSC pulse sensor? Uh, okay, so should we actually decide to launch this out to the commercial sector without any uh, external factors? It should cost roughly around 80 Singapore dollars. So how to answer your question as well. Guys, that was very interesting. Now let's take a quick look at some other healthcare projects to end off this segment. I can certainly see that there will be a demand for these types of products. Yes. Okay. So a very broad definition of advanced manufacturing is the use of innovative technology to improve products or processes. It is frequently described as Industry 4.0, the next industrial revolution. Let's watch a video showcasing the TP Advanced Manufacturing Centre. The Tomasic Polytechnic Advanced Manufacturing Center concentrates on the need to upskill both the existing and future workforce as advanced manufacturing technologies such as robotics and automation, artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things become more prevalent today. Students attached to the center get to do hands-on research and development on these emerging technologies so that they are ready to ride the wave of the new Industry 4.0 transformation. Advanced manufacturing can employ a diverse range of technologies including AI, robotics, just to name a few. Our final group of students showcase some of these technologies in their advanced manufacturing projects. Let's hear from them now.
Hey, hi, hi, Brito. Hi. Finally, we finished our advanced manufacturing presentation. How was your major project presentation uh, recently? The presentation was quite good. The judges have some tricky questions, but finally, it was all around. It was very good. Mm. And how how was your? Oh, for hours we do our uh, argument reality. Uh, basically, we overrun our presentation due to the long slides that we created. But other than that, everything is good. Okay. Hi guys. Hello. Hello. Hi. Haven't seen you guys for a while. What are you guys doing now? Oh, we just finished our major project presentation. That must be a relief. Yes, it feels like a, a big load off our shoulders. Yeah, but some of us are still improving on our prototypes. Wow, you, you work too hard. But for, at least we are done. Hey, by the way, what are your projects about? Well, Gary and I worked on augmented reality, and Brito's major project was on 3D printing. He uses cement instead of plastic. Yeah, it was under uh, advanced manufacturing. So, what is advanced manufacturing? And how is it different from the manufacturing that we have? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, we just watched this uh, video explaining about the difference. Why not let us share with you through this uh, video? In the beginning, everything was made by hand by skilled craftsmen. The process was slow and error prone. Animal and human labour started to be replaced by mechanisation. Steam or water was used to power the machines. This was known as the first industrial revolution. The second industrial revolution saw steam and water power replaced with electricity. Factories also started mass production and assembly lines. Computers started to be used to control machines. Automation enabled tasks to be performed repeatedly and with greater precision. This was the dawn of the Third Industrial Revolution. The Fourth Industrial Revolution, also known as Advanced Manufacturing, makes use of digitization, cyber-physical systems and cloud computing to create what we call a smart factory. There are many technologies supporting advanced manufacturing. So that's what it's all about. It's just uh, making use of the latest tech to improve productivity, efficiency, and quality in manufacturing. Our project utilizes two of these technologies, additive manufacturing and augmented reality. Whoa, that is cool. So two of us is actually taking 3D printing elective. Mm. Brito, is it possible for you to explain a little bit more on your presentation? Sure, let me show you my slides. As you can see, this is our final prototype. The printer has an interchangeable nozzle for cementous printing and printing using thermoplastic filaments like PLA, ABS and so on. It can also be fitted with a direct extrusion screw for printing using thermoplastic pellets. So the main objective was to develop a customized 3D printer and also design the prototype using Creo 6. So the project scope is to learn about different materials that we're using and also the different types of 3D printers that are available on the market. So the structural wise, we designed a Cartesian 3D printer. It got X, Y and Z axis. Apart from that, we also have X axis carriage to attach the extruder head and Y axis carriage to attach the heating bed. This is the final prototype we designed using Creo 6. To move to the electronic side, we got Adreno Mega 2560 and RAMS 1.4 board as the major control, controller boards. We also have Repra full graphics display and 12 volt power supply to power up the whole circuit. The stepper motor are controlled using TB6600 stepper drivers and also have three limit switches on each axis. The main challenges that we face is to extrude uniform thickness and the width. Secondly, to maintain layer mechanical strength. Now I show you the final prototype, the working prototype. 
So basically, this is our final working prototype. Now uh, you can see that we are using a plastic, thermoplastic uh, pellets to print, print using the 3D printer. And this is the uh, part we printed cement using the 3D printer that we designed. By the way, how big is the 3D printer of cement? Is it the same as our school 3D printers? Uh, actually, the 3D printer is quite bigger than our school because the printing envelope itself 500 times 500 base and height of 300 mm. So it's quite bigger than our college one. Yeah. So as you mentioned that you're using cement, mm -hmm. how are you guys going to fit into the machine? Actually, we designed an extruder for uh, cement 3D printing. So the cement mixture pour into that extruder and it also got one stepper motor with lead screw to push the material through the nozzle. Whoa, so that is how it's done. Yeah. But do you agree? Can you elaborate about your project? Oh, so basically what we did was argument reality. Okay, it's an integration of digital information with the environment in real time and also overlays new information on top of the existing envir uh, environment. Huh? What? Okay, huh? have you all played Pokemon Go before? Yes. yes. Well, that's augmented reality in action. So it's basically like uh, implementing uh, computer generated images onto the real life environment. Wasn't that what I said? <laughs> yeah, so basically that's what we did for our project. Oh, oh okay. So, okay. So, so Prito, is it possible to help us to uh, show our slides to them? Okay, sure. So what is augmented reality about? Augmented reality is the integration of digital information with the user's environment in real time. It also uses existing environment and overlays new information on top of it. So the softwares that we use are Creo Parametrics 5.0, Creo Illustrate, and Fulvora Studio. So for Creo Metrics 5.0, we used it to create the 3D models of the Advanced Manufacturing Center. We created a one-to-one -one scale of the models to the real-life uh, components that can be found in the reconfiguration circuit. And the 3D models that we, that we created are detailed and, so be, and are exact to the real-life models. So here is an over, overview of the reconfiguration circuit that was made in uh, Creo. Now I'll pass the time to Gary. Okay, uh, the other software we, that we use is Creo Illustrate. Uh, so basically we import the design in Creo 5.0 into it and create the animation as if it is real. And these are the three robot models that we uh, work on. e 600, Viper 650, and Hornet 565. Last, the last software that we use is Visual Studio. Okay. Uh, basically, we import all our animation, our design into it, just that we uh, import the information, or the manual information, uh, and many more information into it to mix them together so that it's easier for the user to learn what is, uh, what is, uh, what is the robot about and also uh, how to actually do maintenance into it. Not only that, you also can see how the product is actually being uh, assembled without looking at the real version. Okay. So lastly is the view, uh, visual view. We use that to use our devices to scan and make it uh, in the real, real, uh, in the real version. So these are the examples that uh, we have done, okay, uh, from maintenance to product assembly and also talking about our uh, machine. This is really very interesting. By the way, do you need an uh, app? through your phone or tablet to view the AR? As mentioned earlier, we use Fuvora View on the phone or tablet to view our augmented realities and interact with it with the features that, uh, in, sorry, the, the augmented reality models are from the uh, Advanced Manufacturing Center. There were quite a few uh, softwares that you guys showcased there. Like, how is it like learning them? Okay, so basically the software, we got some resources and we try to make it 
such that we uh, we try to learn self learn and we use around two to three weeks to understand it and we put into our work. Uh. Now we will show a video of our project. So we use JavaScript to create the interactive features. And here we use image target to scan for the augmented reality model. These are the labels of the components. And here we teach the user how to perform maintenance and servicing. We also display an exploded view of each robot. Wow, I didn't know you could use your mobile phone to use uh, augmented reality. It's pretty cool. Thank you for sharing with us. And guys, you know what? I think it's pretty cool. And I think, I think we should try it soon. Yeah. Wow, pretty impressive. Mm -hmm, yeah, and there are so many things I'd like to ask them. Mm -hmm. And I think the questions from the chat should be ready. So let's go back to the project students to find out more. Guys, we have a question from the audience um, by Su Chai Lim. They're asking, how did your mechatronics diploma prepare you for your 3D printer project? OK, uh, for my project, actually from the course, we learned a lot of fundamental things that are required for the project, mainly uh, the engineering design and engineering drawing. Both help us to learn Creo, which help for prototyping the software. Nice. So the next question comes from Sean, and then it's, does this, does, sorry, does this cement printer cost more than a normal 3D printer? Okay, for my, our printer we designed, it costs around uh, $1,000, less than $1,000 for the mechanical part, including the stepper motors drivers, the controller boards, all together. Ooh, cool. Now we're just uh, waiting for the next question. Yeah. All right, so for the next question will be, what was the motivation, the reasons behind the idea of the 3D printers, like why is there the particular focus? Okay, uh, nowadays we are um, more on uh, on development side. So, 3D printer using cement is quite help for making uh, buildings using cement blocks. So, uh, actually, it helps in industrial sector more. We can reduce the labor work. Uh, because we can cement, we can print blocks using cement. Is uh, we can actually reduce the cost of the production. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah, so we got a question from Sharon. How is augmented reality technology applicable to the industry? So basically, uh, as is shown in the video just now, uh, it's just a big, big uh, user on the information that is needed uh, for for the particular thing, and also. For also can help the uh, user to know how to actually maintain the uh, robots and all. Then the next question: How long does it take to implement the AR? Um, it took us about three months to create the product. So that's inclusive of uh, the coding for the features, uh, the modeling of each robot, and the image scanning, so all around about three months. Yes. Mm. 
thanks everyone. Before we go on, we'd like to present a short video of some of the other advanced manufacturing projects. Some pretty cool stuff, don't you agree? Yeah, it's uh, so, and it's an it's an it's an expressive example, impressive example of adapting and innovating to remain competitive. That's <laughs> true, and it's an excellent match for the theme for this year's show, where technology meets innovation. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our program for this morning. On behalf of Tomasic Polytechnic and the School of Engineering, we would like to thank you once again for joining us here today and for your participation in this event. Please take a moment to snap the QR code to provide some quick feedback for today's event. Thank you so much for being with us and have a great day.